Hey everyone, it's Bigsy, and welcome to Hive Swap. This is an adventure game that I know a lot of people have been looking forward to, and I'm kind of excited to play it too, to a small degree. I'm also kind of nervous. Um, because for those of you who don't know, the game is based in the Homestuck universe, and Homestuck, if you don't know what that is, is a webcomic, a Flash comic that came out back in 2009, and it ended back in 2016. And it's a very long story, like the pages themselves are fairly simple, it's just like a few lines of text between the different characters and stuff like that. And it usually came with like a flash animation or a little flash game. Um, so like the pages are simple, but there's like 8,000 pages, so it's a very long story. Um, and I got into it after I played Undertale because I saw a lot of people drawing similarities between like Undertale and Homestuck and my brother was a Homestuck fan I don't know if he wants me to tell the whole world that I don't know he has like this weird mentality towards people knowing that he liked Homestuck but yeah I kind of like was familiar with Homestuck and I was curious about it so I ended up reading a few of the acts I think I got to like act three and then I kind of fell out of it so I never finished Homestuck but I would like to I would like to go back to it one day and maybe this game will be a good excuse to go back to it um but yeah I'm kind of familiar with Homestuck, but I never finished it. However, I do know that there is a part of Homestuck that is called Hivebent, and I don't want to say anything more about that. I don't want to spoil too much of the story for people. Um, but since this is called Hive Swap, I have a feeling it's going to deal with the Hivebent universe, which I don't know much about. So I may be a bit ignorant towards that, but, you know, some of the other, I guess, Easter eggs and stuff like that that'll be in the game, the other references that may be in the game, I may understand. Um, so that's why I'm a small bit nervous to play, because it's going to be one of those things where it's like, I feel like I'm going to understand some of the game, but other parts are going to go right over my head. So be patient with me if you're familiar with Homestuck, and if not, then this will be a new introduction to the Homestuck universe for everyone. And I have a feeling, like with how popular and how highly anticipated this game has been, this is going to be like the introduction to Homestuck for a lot of people. So I'm hoping they kept that in mind when they made the game, and it's going to be gentle, I guess. It's going to like ease us into it a small bit and be like, hey! Hey buddy, you're new to Homestuck, let me show you a thing or two. Um, but like already I see some references to Homestuck, like the sun looks like one of the symbols from Homestuck. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to play it, a little nervous, but like I said, I'm really excited for the game itself because the art style looks beautiful. I heard Toby Fox did the music and he did the music for Undertale and I absolutely adored that music to bits. I adored that game to bits, but like the music was especially, I don't know. It, it stood out to me, so I'm very excited to play this. I hope you guys are excited to go through this with me. I hope we're all ready for the Hive Swap adventure. Um, so with that long tangent out of the way, let's begin. We good? Like, good Gandhi. <laughs> that went from 0 to 100 real quick. Um, anyways, your name is... Sorry, you're gonna need a minute. Okay, you gave yourself a minute to freak out because of the monster, the thing with all the legs and the teeth, the one you barely got away from. Minutes up, though. You take a deep breath, let the uncertainty slip away into the toothy, arm-waggling darkness, and focus on what you know. Your name is Joey Claire. You live just outside the town of Hauntswitch. You are, in no particular order, a puzzle solver, a semi-orphan, a dancer of multiple schools, an aspiring veterinarian, and a big sister. Speaking of, that monster, the one that barely missed eating you alive, only you're not thinking about that right now, it might be heading back outside to where your little brother is. You've gotta warn him. Okay, how do we do that thing? Real quick, what's this? <laughs> It's like, we have our goal in mind. Ooh, what is this thing I can interact with? Just immediately get distracted. 
This is a raised and cushioned platform where you spend several hours a day unconscious and hallucinating, usually while the majority of other people on the continent are also doing the same thing. It's where you sleep at night. Got it. <laughs> um, there's that thing. Can we interact with that thing? Your walkie-talkie. Half of a set. Your brother has the other one. Could come in handy. Well, there we go. Simple as that. Aw, it's like the Silidex from the comics. Are we gonna have to deal with fetch modis? The, the fetch modis thing? I hope not. Hmm, it feels a little light. Uh-oh. Yep, no batteries. You remember cannibalizing the walkie-talkie when something else needed them, but you can't recall exactly what that something else was. Okay. Uh, so we need batteries. Are they in the backpack? Your babysitter got you this junior veterinarian's med kit. It's kind of important to you, so you think you'll leave it here for now. It would really bust you up if something happened to it. Okay. Um... Oh, it's 1994. That explains a lot. Because, <laughs> like, during that entire scene, I didn't want to talk during the introduction. Because, uh, I don't know, it looked amazing, and I just didn't want to ruin the introduction, like I said. Um, but, like, the entire time, I couldn't help but notice, like, all the stuff that was, like, laying around. And, like, there was a whole bunch of, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle dolls and, like, He-Man and Skeletor dolls. And I think I saw Light Bright in the hallway. And there are Lisa Frank posters. So, I was like, wow, I feel like a kid again just running through this house. And there's a bunch of, like, glowy stars everywhere. And I remember having a bunch of these. I actually did the same thing in my room, because I went through, like, this weird phase where I was like, I don't need a nightlight. I'm not scared of the dark. And then I was scared of the dark, but I didn't want to admit it, so I ended up getting a whole bunch of these. What can we look at? Oh, we can look at this. What are you? We can write. It's locked. If you wish to gain access to your long buried or recently buried secrets, you'll have to use the diary key. I don't think I have that thing, so maybe we can't? You usually don't have much to record in here on the account of your humdrum life that you lead, but you think today will be a different story. Maybe you should take a moment to record a note now, just in case this is your last chance to set down your final words before your tragic demise at the hands of a horrible snaky thing. Yeah... Maybe, if we can find the key. I thought it was more of like a salamander though, like a salamander centipede. What? How can you combine salamander and centipede? A salipede? Or a centimander? I like centimander. We're gonna call it a centimander. This is Sir Bappy Pawswater, your beloved manthro chap. You tend to his fussy whims and needs when you trouble to imagine what they might be. What a daring dream to combine the finest qualities of the animal kingdom with the nobility of humanimals. Wait, you mean humanity. Anyway, Sir Bappy Pawswater will have to tend to his own fussy whims and needs for a while. You got a lot of crap on your plate right now. I forgot they were called Manthro Chaps. I thought they were just called... What was the one in the comics called? Mr. Coxcomb? I thought that's what they were all called. Puppy surprise is having puppies. How many? That's the surprise. Puppy surprise, puppy surprise. Ugh. Whenever you look at this thing, the song from that commercial runs through your head like a snake monster on an autumn afternoon. It's a great place to stash your keepsakes, where they stay as safe as a teen hiding in her bedroom from a snake monster. How appropriate. Can we search it? You reach inside the expectant plush canine and... Puppies! Surprise! It's having puppies! What a surprise! Yeesh. They're kind of creepy. <laughs> not gonna lie, I was gonna be like, what a surprise, they're adorable, but let's not tell lies. Um, can we look at these? Ah yes, no one would ever think to look for your precious diary key inside a plush mother dog. Least of all your brother, who was upset he didn't get one of the puppies. Jude can be pretty melodramatic. Speaking of precious keys, there's also a beautiful old trinket that used to belong to your mom. You have no idea what it is, but looking at it reminds you of her. Honestly, you're not sure you'd be comfortable leaving it here with everything that's going on. Okay, can we take them? Key get! You collect the diary key from its plush hiding womb. While you're at it, you think maybe you should keep this beautiful heirloom of your mom's close. Just a feeling. A deep, inexplicable, impossible to ignore feeling. Don't question it. Just roll with it. Got it. Okay, well, I guess we can look at this now, since we have a key for it. Maybe something from your past will shed some light on today's terror mysteries. Some little detail mentioned offhand and forgotten. The key 
kicking off a casual cascade of connections that terminates a ca in a catastrophe of snake monsters. That was a heck of a sentence. <laughs> April 13th, 1994. What an interesting day to start this journal diary off on. Dear diary, ho hum. Nothing much happened today. I tried to make some new friends at school to maybe expand our social circle beyond just me and Jude's friends all the time. Wait, is it weird to call my brother's friends my social circle? Eh, well, you know what I mean, diary. I don't have any friends that I can really call mine, so I'm trying to branch out. I guess it's better than calling them my web ring. The kids at school are jerks, though, and they call me a poser when I try to talk to them about games I like and stuff. Between you and me, I think a bunch of the kids at school might be... evil? Jeez, now I'm starting to sound all paranoid like my brother. They're just up to no good. I can feel it. Joey. June 12th, 1994. Dear Diary, whew, first day of summer vacation. Can't wait to get a break from all those clowns at school. Sometimes I think what I really need is a vacation from humanity. Joey. Joey, you are too young to be thinking this way. <laughs> you're, you're just a, a teen. Well, yeah, I guess in my teenage years I felt the same way too. October 25th, 1994. Dear Diary, I can't believe I haven't recorded an entry since the beginning of last summer. Needless to say, I've been back to school for a while now. Next summer can't come soon enough. I came home to a drunk babysitter again today. Sure is some ad quality adult supervision we youngsters are getting around here. She means well enough, though. Haven't heard from Pa in weeks. Last we saw him, he popped in the house to drop off more stupid mummies and globes or whatever. Then skipped off to go on more adventures. What a bozo. Also, how lame is it that he made us call him Pa instead of Dad while we were growing up? He's old fashioned. I miss Mom. Aww. If this is the last entry in your diary, then by gum you're going to scare the bejesus out of whoever finds it once you're snake chow. November 11th, 1994. Dear Diary, forgive my hasty and nervous scribbling. I'm kind of scared, but maybe also a bit excited. Anyway, can't talk much now. There's a sly and cunning monster on the prowl, possibly hungry for kid meat too. So I've got to... ellipsis. Okay. I don't have a darn clue what I have to do. Oh, it keeps going. I thought it was going to end there. She was going to leave it on a cliffhanger. <laughs> um, okay, I don't have a darn clue what to do, but I'll fill you in later once I do it. Joey. Satisfied, you've done your duty vis-a-vis -vis posterity in case the worst should happen. You relock your diary and hide the key again, safe and sound. Okay. Cool. <laughs> like I said, I just thought it was going to end with the ellipsis, so I was like, dramatic ellipses. Oh, wait. <laughs> What's in here? What is this? Ah, oh, it's our closet. You have a lot of Rubik's Cubes. Girl, I think you might have a problem. <laughs> but then again, they are kind of fun. I've started, like, learning how to solve them. I still have to use a walkthrough, um, but I'm learning the different patterns you have to use to figure them out, so it's a lot of fun. Why are you shiny? Why are you shine like that? You really get a charge out of this game. It's kind of bossy, though. Well, it's Simon Says. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> oh, right. That's where you put the walkie-talkie batteries. You'll just take them back out. Okay, one more game for old time's sake first. Dude's... He's probably fine. Of course. Our brother is always fine in the case of Simon Says. I wasn't paying attention. What? It was yellow, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> It does like all the- it flashes all the colors before it flashes the actual color that it's starting off with, so it keeps confusing me. Uh, and then it was red? Yes. Yellow, red, green. Okay. So yellow, red, green. Oh. It looks like the green button isn't working. Well, nostalgia satisfied. Might as well scavenge the batteries. Oh, we have batteries. I forgot that was a thing we were supposed to be doing. I saw like the walkie-talkie and then the batteries and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Our brother. That's supposed to be something we're doing. Uh, so do that. There we go. Success. The walkie-talkie works like a charm now. A charm with battery power. You feel pretty pleased with yourself. It would seem you just solved your first puzzle of many on what is sure to be a sweeping adventure full of mysterious brain busters. 
Then again, putting batteries in a thing isn't technically solving a puzzle, you suppose. It's just overcoming a minor inconvenience that you created for yourself using mundane, wi widely available modern technology. You don't care, though. You're counting it. Yeah. This is definitely... Even a simple puzzle is a puzzle nonetheless, so... Jude, are you there? Are you alright? Yes. Been covertly signaling status and requesting yours. Over. You mean the lantern? I don't know Morse code. You, uh, I would never use such an easily decipherable code. Over. Enemy agents everywhere. Over. Wait. Unover. Still unconfirmed vis-a-vis -vis your condition following enemy serpent encounter. Over. Please report bite status. How many and how gross. Over. Uh, I'm fine or not great? Do we want to troll him? Do we want to tease him? No, we'll be honest. I'm fine. No bites, you weirdo. But thank you for asking. It was a close one. Great. Was worried. Over. That reminds me. After I shut the door on it, I think I heard it clomping off back down the stairs. I don't think you should leave your treehouse anytime soon. It might be heading back your way. No plans of leaving current location. Yard crawling with cryptid vanguard. Over. Uh, cryptid vanguard? Cryptid vanguard? Yeah, that makes two of us. Missing big picture, Joey. Over. Okay, maybe a little less obtuse then. Purely defensive posture, tactically suicidal monsters, likely just distraction, could have obscured additional agents on approach. Over. You mean like more monsters or... Can't discuss on unsecured channel. Can't be certain who's listening. But evidence points to an terrorist class conspiracy cascade. Over. What? Uh, or what? Over. What? Over. Relieved you're taking this seriously. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. Are you totally prepared to begin forward operations? No going back now, Joey. Over. I was making fun of you, dweeb. I'm not going anywhere. Trust crucial on the battlefield, Joey. Hoping presence of monsters has tipped equation away from tip typical skepticism. Over. Um, I trust you were trust is for chumps. Trust is for chumps. I want to click it so badly, but that would be mean. And I don't want to be mean. I want to be honest, and we trust them. Okay, that's... that's fair. Okay. Uh, what do I need to know? Your current position is not secure. Large yard facing windows. Location compromised to enemy. Situation rapidly deteriorating. Must abscond to attic, Joey. Over. The attic? Yes, the attic. Strong door. Well stocked with tactical material. Take left out of bedroom and go upstairs. Highest room in the house. Over. I know what the attic is, Jude. It was just a weird suggestion. What else is new? More inscrutable rambling from my treehouse lunatic brother. Don't understand. You sounded confused. Trying to help. Over. Look, just shut up, okay? I'll sneak up there, lock the door, and you can call the cops or call our babysitter. It's been my experience, or at least based off what I've seen from, like, any sort of cartoon or TV show or movie where kids are getting into all sorts of weird shenanigans, um, that usually calling the cops doesn't really do anything because they don't believe you. Uh, but sometimes calling the babysitter works, depending on the plot. Call our babysitter. Too late to reach her at lab. Working day long done. Over. Oh no, you're right. Agreed on both accounts. Babysitter capable strifer could help tip scales. Might also help convince you to get to safety. Jude, I'm going to the stupid attic, okay? I'm sorry for being mean. Do you have your weapon? Over. Um, sure don't. Sure don't. Why would I keep that thing around? Serpents swarming everywhere, over. You want me to fight them with a flashlight. Don't blame you for being nervous with such high concentration of serpent presence. Must be brave. Your brother believes in you and knows you can beat the serpents, over. 
Stop saying serpents. Do you recall where the weapon is? Over. Apparently I do. It's in the closet. Understood. All set then. Over. No, I mean the hall closet. Oh crap. Over. Yeah, well, I guess I'll have to take your word about all this. You are sure about all this, right? Absolutely extremely certain. Over. Over and out, Squirt. Okay. I want to look out the window real quick. Because, uh, apparently he was sending Morse code, but I didn't even see it. Um, we can look at it, though. You briefly mused on the metaphorical significance of the flashing light. What could it represent? The past? The future? America? It's your stupid brother. You need to get in touch with him. I think I was supposed to read that before we got in touch with him. My bad. Um... I think I just saw a doggo po uh, poke its head out of the doghouse, though. Poor puppy. If that icky, snaky thing hurt her, well, you'd use your budding veterinary skills to patch her up and make it all better. But you'd also be very angry. Right now, she doesn't seem to want to come out of her doghouse, and you don't blame her. Yeah, they got these weird monster duders out there with huge mouths. They kind of look like... What was the name of, like, the evolution for Zubat? I can't remember. I don't know. But this guy is super pretty. Like, I do know that. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode here. And in the next episode, we'll start heading towards the attic. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm super excited to play this. And I already see, like, some, you know, odds and ends that are a part of the comics and stuff like that. Like, like I said, this reminds me of the Silidex. And we have Mr... I already forgot his name. What's his name? Bappy Paw Swatter. Uh, so we have him as well. And I'm sure there are other easter eggs around here somewhere, but I just don't recognize them because they may be from later on in the comic. But I'm really excited to see where it goes from here. I'm excited to see what our adventure will be like. Um, but that's going to do it for this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And of course, I do want to thank you all for watching. And I will see you in our next little adventure. Bye!